Do again. I see a plate on the weekdays. On the weekdays. I never tell when we say. Oh. I never want to look back and wish I could have been. I never got no regret. The hours I've been putting in. So take a chance on faith. Your mind's a ballast, please. So take a chance. Hey folks, welcome to the live stream. That was footage from iGal week number 10. 10 weeks into this. I can't believe it was still going. And no, I did not earn a letter on that one. I have no idea how super excited that I didn't. But my goodness, I broke all sorts of stuff. I broke more stuff on that one challenge than I have broken all year. I mean, props aside, but even on that, I managed to break props. It was crazy. Um, so anyways, welcome to the live stream. This is uh, Tweet FPV. We talk about these little things, FPV drones, quads, whatever you want to call them. Uh, my name's Dan. You can call me Dan. Most people call me Tweet. Call me whatever you want. If you want to get a hold of me, if you want me to see what, uh, if you want me to see your comment in the comment section, type at Tweet and it should pop up. My name will show up in orange, kind of like you see here on the uh, this side of the screen. That'll help me. Uh, that'll help me notice it. And if I, for some reason I don't get to your question, ask it again in a few minutes. Uh, I'm, I'll try to get to it as best I can. Uh, super chats. If you don't know what super chat is, that's that's a way you can give back to me. Uh, those will definitely get answered. Ask me anything you want. If you want to throw in a super chat, um, let me know how the audio is. Uh, I've moved this PC around or this laptop around, and uh, I think I may have bumped a few settings. And it's a new version of OBS. So. Let's hope there's no technical issues. I hate upgrading OBS because once it starts working, I just want it to stay. Man. All right. So a lot of crazy stuff going on in the uh, the FPV world in the last few weeks. Uh, Rotor Riot, bought by Red Cat. Yeah. Crazy, right? Fat Shark, bought by Red Cat. What the heck is going on, guys? What do you think? Let me know. Put it down in the comments. What do you think is going on? Also, if you want to get a hold of anything uh, Tweet FPV related, I do have a, uh, a link tree, which it's just a convenient way to put all of the, uh, the links that have to do with what I'm doing all in one convenient place for you. Uh, affiliate links, products, uh, my Tweet FPV branded radio grips. If you haven't seen those, check that out. 
they are uh, they are super nice if I say so myself, which I kind of have to because I, I make them. But uh, being carried by two major retailers now, Race Day Quads and Pyro Drone. Super excited about that. Uh, big uh, big deal, and man, I'm, I'm already getting reorders, and it, I, I never thought it would go the way it is. Uh, yeah, so Red Cat, buying everything. I'm not really sure why. I think uh, rumor has it they're trying to package pre um, ready to fly kits, goggles, controllers, quads, all one stop shop. But I don't know. I'm not counting what DJI is for right now. But anywho, moving on from that. Uh, time will tell what happens with that. Uh, the Ghost system has started shipping. I really haven't seen a whole lot of uh, feedback, positive or negative. Just people are getting it, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, let's go back to the chat here. Oh man, Cy, first one on the chart. Welcome, Cy. Boots FPV, how's it going? T-Bird, welcome back. Clemson is still playing. That's, um, is that soccer? I don't know. Just mess away. Celeste, welcome, buddy. Out on the West Coast. Nice that you could be hanging out. Saw your last edit. Super cool. Too bad you lost that HD footage over the water. That would have been, uh, that would have been cool. Um, but that that split second where you went where you lost your FPV view, ooh man, I bet you there was a pucker moment there, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, but man, no risk, no reward, right? John D's, welcome. Uh, Borges, welcome, buddy. Market Zero, welcome to the live stream. Robert Ortlep, longtime viewer, thank you. And. L. Elston, the first uh, first question. Hi, Tweet. I have a Tiny Hawk 2. How do I make it fly better? Well, how do I mail it fly better? But I think you might make it. And I replied uh, before the stream started to flash Project Mockingbird to it. Uh, so what Project Mockingbird is, is it is a custom tune. Uh, it's basically PIDs and rates and modes set up by uh, Jeremy Clark or David Clark? Jeremy Clark? Clark. Something Clark. Uh, for particular for that particular drone and we can uh we can come over here and project mockingbird and uh not to confuse it with the cia project from like the 60s where they were doing like sleeper cell agent type stuff um there we go this is the one we're talking about And uh, just so you guys know, I am on a single screen setup. So as you guys are chatting away over there in the corner, I can't see it when I'm poking through the browser here. So, um, geez, I forgot who this was. Uh, da, 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 da. L. Leston. Uh, so go to projectmockingbird.squarespace.com and uh, click Project Mockingbird here and Setup Guide. So you can come over here to Project Mockingbird for Tiny Hawk Betaflight 4.0.x. So 4.0, and what you're going to do is you're going to flash Betaflight 4.0 to your to your Tiny Hawk. Then when everything's done flashing to it, you're going to basically come down to the bottom here, all the way to the bottom. You are going to grab all of this code here, and then just just take all of this. Whoop, too far, not far enough. There we go. You're going to copy it. So Control C. You're going to go into uh, Betaflight, hopefully that works. And uh, connect your Tiny Hawk, go down to the CLI here on the left-hand side. Let's uh, shut this off so you can see what I'm talking about. Come down here on the, uh, the left-hand side and um, paste that into the CLI command and then hit enter. That is going to dump that entire configuration file onto your quad. Now, you're either going to need to use your switches on your radio the way they have them set up, or you're going to have to try to uh, set up new switches. And I have had issues with trying to reprogram Project Mockingbird to use different switches because they do do some really weird things with uh, linear rates that don't like to be set through the graphical user interface. They're, they set themselves very well through the CLI, but once you start moving switches around, it gets all messed up. So you may need to make a new profile on your radio that has your switches match what's already on 
the quad, not the other way. Like typically we set the quad up for our switches. You're going to need to set your switches up for your quad. Uh, but that will make it fly ooh, so much better. And then, um, you know, the rest is all, it's all in the thumbs, all in the stick skills. Oh boy. Let's go back here. Um, Da, 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 da. Let's see. Oh, sounds fine. Good. Thanks, guys. Glad to know that. Um, <laughs> TweetFV brought to you by Redcat. I oh, mean, I wish. I guess they're good at buying failing businesses. No, nah, Fat Shark's not a failing business. But um, you know, I have heard that you know they bought into it, but they're not. They're not going to change anything. They're probably just using it for marketing and uh, distribution rights. I mean, you don't you don't buy a a, a successful company to change things. You may try streamlining things, but you're not going to go in there and upturn the apple cart unless you're just terrible at business. But I don't think Red Cat would be where they are with the ability to buy these two companies if they were like that. But geez, who knows? All right. Yeah, Fat Shark has been on the block for a little while now. Um, I wonder. Uh, I wonder if that would, if them buying Fat Shark would help with the uh, Bite Shark, Bite Frost, but no Bite Shark development, because I think they probably need a major influx of cash and uh, R and D to get that thing really going. Uh, Sai, going to start off early with questions. <laughs> uh, what do you think is good? A sub two hundred freestyle five inch that I can. Uh, get rather pre-built or having to build it, having to build it, building it yourself connects you with the quad. This is going to sound kind of weird. When you buy a pre-built, like I, I, I've started getting pre-builds and I've never really connected with them. You know how, I mean, they're all kind of built the same, but when you build it yourself, you know exactly how it went together. You know exactly what you have asked. You know exactly what you did really well. You know what parts are in it. You know what parts you don't like, what parts you do like. Um, you, there's no compromises. You get to do it exactly how you want to do it. And uh, especially for your first quad, build a cheap sub $200 quad. If it goes up in smoke, that's part of the game, but you'll learn from it. As long as you don't do the same thing twice. Oh, and uh, get one of, well, I don't have it around me, but get yourself one of the v uh smoke stoppers. Not, not this little piece of crap. No, you want to get the V-Fi one. Uh, that's a true smoke stopper. Or you can do one of these and build a uh, smoke stopper bulb. This is the absolute cheapest way to do it, and it works just as good. But I definitely recommend building your first quad rather than buying uh, a pre-built. There's a lot of good pre-built quads out of there, but uh, for the price, I think you could probably build a better quad for the same price of what you would pay for a pre-built. That makes any sense. Again, just my uh, my opinion there. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Let's see. Uh, Yabs if you yo tweet dropped your tune on my Tiny Hawk two and it flies great indoors. Yeah, man. Glad you like it. Um, I do have a custom tune that I use for my Tiny Hawk. Uh, uh, Leston, if you want that, uh, hit me up tweetfev at gmail .com. Uh, and I, I'll send it over to you, um, or go on my Discord and uh, just ask for it, and I'll dump it over in the software section uh, if you want it. Uh, it's a little more aggressive. It was definitely tuned for uh, how I race indoors. Basically, there's no angle mode. No, wait. No, it's all angle mode. Sorry. All angle mode. But it's very aggressive. Uh, let's see. I have 16 quads. One is pre-built. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I've been getting more and more pre-builds, but I'd say it's, I definitely have more uh, custom builds than pre-builds for sure. Uh, Project Mockingbird is for, is only for angle mode. It is not just for angle mode, but is very, very much designed for angle mode. It does do a few things with acro, but it, it's, it's designed for angle, yes. Uh, let's see. My guess is Red Cat will attempt to stuff their analytics BS into Bite Shark. Yeah, uh, yeah, somewhere on the blockchain, whatever the hell that means. I know they. I, I saw a Rotorite ep episode that was sponsored by Red Cat where they brought them out to Puerto Rico, which I've I've been in that area in Puerto Rico and it is just freaking gorgeous there. I man, Puerto Rico is an awesome place to visit. 
Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, building is half the fun too. I, I honestly, I'd say I, I'm torn between flying and building. Which one's more fun? Um, well, I guess flying is more fun, but I really like building quads. Uh, how do I know it's compatible with each other so I'm not buying parts I can't use? Uh, basically, the only thing you really have to focus on, Sai, for compatibility is um, the layout of the flight controller and ESC. If you're going to, most most people do 4 and one ESCs, but I'm assuming you're going to do a 4 and one ESC. Make sure they're both the same size, either 20 by 20, 30 by 30. Uh, I'm assuming you're probably not going to do a 16 by 16. Don't do a 16 by 16. They're not, they're not there yet. Um, make sure that they're the same bolt size so it's either m3 or m2 bolts typically when you buy a flight controller just buy a stack uh, just about every manufacturer sells a stack where it's their esc and their flight controller and the two just plug into each other and you're good to go with that as far as motors go for five inch uh 2207 2306 stick with something like that and then the other factor is what size batteries you can use you can use 4s 5s 6s um, the higher cell count, the lower the KV. So if you're going to go with a 6S 2207, you're going to look at, want to look at like anywhere from a 1700 to like a 1850 KV motor. 1850 is kind of on a high side. So I guess like 16 to 18, somewhere around there. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Uh, personally, I like 2207s, but that's, I'm more like the, the throttle resolution of like a racing type quad. Um, as far as camera goes, they sell like, three or four different sizes ca size cameras, make sure your frame, uh, your frame will have specifications on what size camera it uses. Just, uh, why are you not focusing? Focus, you bastard, whatever. Uh, just look at your frame uh, and it'll say what size camera to use, like 20 by 20, that's gonna be a uh, micro. Um, and then just buy a camera that you like or that has the right price point. Look for 16 by nine or four by three. I think most people fly four by three right now. Uh, VTX and receiver, it's just whatever you want. They'll, they're kind of universal. They all work with everything. All right, back to the chat here. Uh, can you use the same uh, Mockingbird for the Tiny Hawk 2? Uh, yeah, I did use the same uh, same thing for Tiny Hawk 2, but you have to be careful when you if you do decide to fly the Tiny Hawk 2 on 2S, Basically, I never flew the Tiny Hawk 2 on 2S. I took the 2S packs, flew them once, they puffed, I threw them away. And 2S on the Tiny Hawk 2 is kind of a gimmick as far as I was concerned. It worked, but it wasn't useful for my purposes, which were racing. So if you're going to use 2S on that Project Mockingbird tune, you need to change the PIDs. And with Betaflip 4.0, I think, it can automatically change PID profiles based on cell count. So it's super convenient. Um, otherwise, you can really damage some stuff. Uh, after I bought a Vortex 250, I decided to build my own. There's no way back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, 20 by 20 stacks are where it's at. I don't buy 30 by 30 anymore. 20 by 20 is super reliable, super solid. They make F7s, tons of UARTs. They're cramming a lot of stuff in those little boards. The downsides I do see are people saying that, oh, the you start getting the uh, the temp warnings, but you know who really cares if you're uh, getting a temp warning? The temp warnings come on very early, and it's not it's not a big deal. Um, let's see, Celis, uh, a good built quad will make you fly over the ocean. <laughs> Try an inverted yaw spin on R nine. Yeah, man, R nine for the win, buddy. R nine is I, I hate the haters with the R nine. R nine is good stuff. You cannot reinvent RF. RF is RF. It's just what it is. It's not magic. Now, there's other things you can add to it, like user experience and uh, packet redundancy and things like that. But as far as pure transmission, it's all the same. Better tuned antennas are about the only thing you can change about it. Angel FPV, what's up, buddy? Uh, what is the best AIO board for Tiny Trainer? Um, I'm hoping it's going to be this Mamba FC that, I, or this uh, the Diatone Mamba flight controller I have in here because this one is very special. It's special because it is one of only two AIOs that I know of that can run Falco X. And that's what the plan is today. 
is to get Falco X onto this guy. And uh, it's this one's beta flight. They're both beta flight right now. I've flown this one. This one flies freaking unbelievable. It flies so good. So good. We're going to put Falco up. Yeah, yeah. Put Falco X on it and see if it's any better. And this is going to be really interesting because this computer I'm running on has never had the Falco or the, the Flight One configurator on it. I've never had this quad plugged into this computer. So we're going to experience all the heartache and BS that's going to come along with trying to do this. So hopefully it's not too much of a struggle. Um, let's see. Back to the chat. Oh, da, da, da. 1950 where is where it's at. 2207. Yeah, 1950. That's good too. Um, I mean, you can run, you can run 2300 kV motors on 6s. You just have to put a uh, motor output uh, limit on them. Otherwise, it'll just draw a ton of amps. Phoenix 2 is a good camera. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of run cam products. I've tried uh, Fox Ears. I never really cared for them. I, and um, a couple Cadex. The Cadex were really good once you took the lens off and cleaned them. I swear, in the factory, when they're putting those lenses on, they probably, they're probably they going like, oh, all right, here's the body, here's the lens. Then they screw it on there. Every single Cadex camera, it's like looking through the inside of a cataract. I always have to take them apart, clean them, refocus them, get the dirt and dust out of them. I have no idea why. Uh, Going to do a TBS pod racer. Oh, that'd be really cool. I, I really like that frame. They're using the uh, SLS nylon, uh, which is a, it, it is a darn near indestructible material until it gets cold. Just remember that. If it's cold out, that stuff will just basically shatter. Uh, PK Stefan, love your grips, man. Thanks, man. Uh, I it, it has turned into something more than I ever thought it would. Uh, I'm at the point where I'm thinking about scaling up my, my little cheap Chinese K40 laser, and that's what they're referred to as the Chinese K40 laser. Um, I find myself waiting on that thing, so I think it's about time to to step up to something bigger. Uh, plus, I got a bunch of buddies that want me to cut foam wings for them, so I mean, share the wealth, right? Uh, let's see, the new Beta FEV 2004 motors are so sick. Uh, I haven't seen those. Let's, uh, let's go peruse the interwebs here. Beta, oh, let's learn to type, there we go. Electronics, motors. Brushless, of course. You talking about these guys? Oh, there we go. 2004 motors. That is an interesting size. That is, I think... I mean, that, that's kind of comparable to like what's in this little guy. Um, but that would be a great motor for a, like an ultralight five inch, uh, racing quad. I might have to try that. I might have to try to cut another one of, uh, Dave C's, uh, gate hunter frames and give that a shot. Um, yeah, those are nice looking, but how many five inch team out props are available? That's going to be the, that's going to be the, the hard part is finding enough. Uh, props because these are all T mount motors, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so they're all T mount, and I haven't really seen a ton of T mount props. So that's another thing you got to consider when you start looking at uh, like exotic lightweight motors. Let's see, Robert Orlev, did you see the grips on the Special Edition TX-16S? Uh, no, I have not seen the grips. Uh, Speedy Turtle, what's up, man? Welcome to the live stream. And, oh, going back through the chat. Let's see, tweet, uh, the temp warning, you can turn it off in the OSD. Uh, yeah, I, that's what I do. I always turn them off. But if you don't know that, you'll see temp warning. And a lot of people kind of freak out and worry about it, you know. Every quad I have, I get the temp warning 30 seconds into them sitting on the starting block. But then again, I'm, I'm also in southern Alabama where it is hot as all you know what here. Um, which transmitter between the QX7 and the X90? Uh, I mean, the access one. 
Uh, L less than, uh, are you asking which one I would suggest between the two? Is, uh, uh, let me know. Uh, Angel FPV, uh, what feel better or more similar to five inch, the tiny trainer or normal toothpick? Uh, tiny trainer, because it's heavier. Definitely because it's heavier. So the thing you lose with the super lightweight quads like the toothpick is you lose the, the momentum that they have. So when you, when you pop the throttle, like you're trying to pop over a tree or a building, the toothpicks just kind of, they just kind of stop. So you got to carry the throttle over everything. Whereas the tiny trainer, it has a little bit of heavy or has a little bit of heavy. Damn. It has a little bit of heft to it that when you let go of the throttle, there's some inertia and it'll, it'll keep going. Not like a five inch, but more so like a five inch than a toothpick would. Boots already deleting messages. Cool, man. Uh, sell us. Sorry. Are you excited for next week's whoop? I am super excited for next week's uh, next week's um, I got challenge. It is basically um, inverted yaw spins or the trippy spin. So the challenge is two loops clockwise and two loops counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, and I've already kind of done a trippy spin on a previous I got competition, so I know I can do it. It's just a matter of going out and like tuning it and and honing it in and trying to do something cool with it. And I got some ideas. I may be breaking a lot of shit this week, but at least it'll be a happy break. Oh, past my way ends at work, so bottoms up. I'd like to thank my patrons. Uh, the, the $2 tier is beer time for some PBRs, so thank you. And if you don't drink, I'm sorry, but um, I apologize. I don't mean to offend anybody. Uh, let's see. A WB blocker. Stream little uh, stream title caught my attention. Never used Falco X, but wanted to. Uh, and build a tiny trainer. I think spec racing, a tiny trainer would be awesome. So we've tried spec racing in my uh, multi-GP group a couple times. It started off with, the, with not the OG Baby Hawk. But the, the second one, the one that wasn't like the flight controller was glued to the frame. It was like the, the real tiny baby hawk. It had carbon fiber and everything. Everybody bought one. We flew one match. It was fun as hell. I wasn't there. It was before I started flying with this group. But it never happened again. And a lot of guys are really against spec racing because it forces you to buy into inferior products. This is not the best flying quad out there. But it sure as shit would be fun to fly against a bunch of people with the exact same quad. That's what I like about spec racing, but it, it does um, it does limit who can, because it's a pay to play thing. Like you gotta build and buy one of these things. You can't just fl bring fly what you brung. You gotta make your own quad. Um, so it does, it does um, alienate some people from flying or competing. Uh, my pitch is a is a compromise to that was we'll do a spec race with the asterisk next to it. Everybody can fly. We'll just keep it at three inch. All right, everybody can. Everybody pretty much has a three inch. But the only people who are competing for points are the people in the spec class, and that would be for like spots one, two, and three. But then you could have a separate class going out at the same time for points one, two, and three of everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's kind of hard to do that from like a race organizer standpoint, but um, I thought it'd be interesting. We had a really cool little spot down by the water. It was like a private little beach pavilion type thing. It would have been pretty cool, but, um, you know, it, it's hard to tell people, hey, you got to have this to, to fly a, a hobby that's already pretty, you know, pretty widespread and out there as far as like what's available and what people have. Uh, let's see. Oh, you have them a power pick. Yeah, I asked you about uh, buying a Gate Hunter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, Monocle. Um, my Shea Poco is sitting there screaming at me to to cut something on it, and I was thinking about I was thinking about cutting a couple of my three inch toothpick frames and do using those for giveaways. I have a few a uh, few plates of carbon fiber sitting around. Uh, I really need to dust off that thing and uh, try using it. Uh, Travis Stevens, welcome, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. Um, 
Pyro has them on Triblade and Two Blade. Okay, cool, awesome. Uh, L Leston, you okay? So you want to know which one you would get between a QX7 or an X9D with access? And my opinion is neither. The X9 Lite is my go-to. Um, it has everything that both the two radios have, but it's smaller. It's smaller, it's easier to use. Well, it's not easier to use. It's just smaller. Uh, the X9D is huge for really no reason other than it has a million switches, which unless you're doing um, you know, nitro running fixed wing with retracts and everything on it, then yeah, you may need that many switches, but most receivers are, most people run receivers at eight channels anyway, so that's, you know, your, four, your, your two sticks, so that's one, two, three, four, then that's four switches, and that's your eight channels. Um, new receivers will run 16, but nobody's, nobody's doing that. Um, the, there's nothing that the QX7 and the X9D will do that the, um, that the X9, uh, the, the X9 Lite will do. Plus, if you want to run, uh, R9, the R9M Lite Pro module fits in it. That is an awesome R9 module. TBS has finally come to their senses and, and gave the market what they wanted, and they're doing a micro um, crossfire module that fits in the back of that thing. It'll run the XJT module, it'll run the iRange X uh, multi protocol module, it'll run the Vantech. Um, I'm telling you, it, to me, it's my it's my favorite FR Sky radio. But with that said, I fly the Tango 2 just because it's even smaller and I like the form factor of it. But the Tango 2 is not a good radio if you fly fixed wing because there's no trim switches. There is an option to go through and do trims, but it's really cumbersome. You gotta, you gotta double click the thumb wheel and then it'll tell you which channel you're on. You can roll it and then you double click it again and it goes to roll and the next one it goes to the aileron. And it's, it's not something you would use on the fly. So long story short, X9D, long story short, the X9 Lite S, that's the one I would say because that one has the extra momentary buttons has internal charging built into it. That that would be that's my pick. I that's my my preferred radio for FR Sky. Okay, going back down through the chat here. Uh, Danger Dave. Oh, I like that name. Oh shoot, the chat just scrolled past everything. Where are we at? All right, I need to find someone who wants to trade. Uh, I have half an EDF wing and uh, lasted two minutes because the gyro went bad and it crashed. Uh, man, I uh, I have a couple fixed wing uh, hanging up in the rafters here. You may have seen them in a few of my, my micro videos flying around the house. I, I'm not going to say I'm scared to fly it, but I'm very apprehensive to fly the fixed wing. Just, I, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. I, it should probably be easier than flying quads, but... I need to spend more time trying to do it, uh, and I'm worried about crashing. I have a, a flight test Night Radian, which is a huge glider, and I think it's just cool as shit. But I, I really need to get out and get out and fly it. Oh, let's see. Sai asks, "What is a good freestyle frame?" Uh, probably. Okay, here we go. A really good freestyle frame is the Impulse RC Apex. It's really expensive. All right, so now we're going to talk rea rea realistically what is a good freestyle frame. So we can go all the way down to the uh, the um, the Isheen, um, uh, not Alien. Crap, what is it? Help me out, guys. The uh, Martian. The Martian. I think those things are what, like 10 bucks? But the garbage, they break really easily, but there's plenty of parts. The parts are cheap too. Um, we could talk Armaton, which has um, lifetime warranty on their frames. They're great frames. I've, I've had plenty of Armaton products in the past, um, lots of options, really well built. Uh, but to cash in on the lifetime warranty, it does take some time to get the replacement parts in. So there's that, but lifetime warranty on it. Um, and, jeez, ah, let's see. What's another good freestyle frame? Uh, the uh, QAVR... Jeez, um, all right. Browser time. Let's go to 
get FPV. Q A V R two. Yeah, this one. This is a good freestyle frame here. Q A V R two. No, this is just a. Oh, dang it! Come on, I don't want Q A V R two. Sorry guys, my nose itches today for some reason. I have no idea why. Yeah, this is a. No, I don't like free things, jerks. Uh, this is a really good freestyle frame, uh, but you know it also depends on what you're trying to do with it. This is good. It has replaceable arms. It's kind of on the pricey side. I, I like the. Uh... The Impulse RC Apex. Uh, a lot of people don't know does have a warranty on it, so if you start breaking parts, you can get a uh, get a replacement. So Impulse RC uh, Apex, this is a extremely durable uh, frame. It's very light. Well, it's not very light, but it's light-ish. It's durable. It's very well built. Um, it's probably one of my favorite freestyle frames. I don't do a whole lot of freestyle, but it's, you know, I've got one built up with the DJI Air unit, and it's, it's a really good frame. Let's see, back to the chat. Um, so that was what's good freestyle frame. Oh boy, man, the chat is moving around a lot. Let's see. Yeah, whatever it is you buy, you're gonna break it. It's not impossible. The, probably the most durable frame out there is the uh, Korea Rhea Talon V2 because it's made of plastic and carbon fiber. But it's not gonna be a good freestyle frame. Uh, Xylo uh, Freakstyle, that, yep, that's a good one too. That's a good choice. Um, even the CL1 and the um, the Source one, those are good frames. They're they're heavy. There's not a lot of uh, there's nothing special about them, but they're good frames. They're fairly durable. If you want something that's darn nerd indestructible, BQE makes some beefy frames that are man, they are tough as nails, but they're heavy. But they're heavy. Uh, have you noticed a big latency difference when flying DJI or analog? Uh, flying, all my acro quads are all digital now. I I have zero need to fly analog with uh, acro, and once if you if you do it once, you, you're hooked. It is so much better. It is so much better. And then this last update where it has 50 megabits per second uh, transmission rate. It's even more better. Like it is so clear. Like I haven't flown a, uh, digital in a little while, and I was messing with um, the Flywoo Explorer LR today, and it was just sitting on my bench. I plugged it in, put my goggles on. I'm like, oh man, I forgot how good this is uh, for racing. I haven't dabbled too much in racing with the DJI, but I do have um, I do have a Floss Three built up with a Vista in it, and you know it's a mixed bag super high-end racers they're going to they're gonna suffer because of the latency i'm not super high in racing um i can almost fly better with that because i can see more uh, i can see clearer my brain's not trying to process what's happening next because of how grainy the footage is but with that said racing with dji is called there's a whole other can of worms you have to work through with coordinating with other people like where you stand someone's video goes bad they blame the digital guy you know there, there's other stuff when it comes to racing right now as far as everything stands if you're racing it's it's analog you're gonna go with analog when you're racing freestyle digital i don't notice a difference now the dji system has the ability to do like high quality mode digital the latency is horrific on it like if you're trying to do proximity stuff you're gonna crash now, if you're just doing like flying landscapes and nothing crazy, the the video quality is so good, so good. But you really feel the latency. I, I mean, I I don't know if I'm stressing it enough how good the DJI system looks. I'm not a DJI fanboy. I'm just, but I don't like the idea of a fanboy. I appreciate what it is for what it is, and it is really good at what it's supposed to be doing. 
with that said, I fly everything. I have digital, I have analog, I have the DJI remote, I have TBS products, I have FR Sky products. I, I mean, this hobby is too awesome to lock yourself into one brand or one style of something. Like, you're doing yourself a disservice. Like, why do that? Okay. Um, let's see. Danger Dave says uh, Impulse RC Apex, CL1, Rotor Ride, or TBS Source 1. Yep. Uh, like I said, those are all good, good choices. Uh, Robert Ortlip, take care all. Just uh, drove into our gate at the end of our road. Oh, man. Uh, good luck with that. We'll see you around, Robert. Uh, take care of business, man. Uh, Multi-class racing is a thing for sure. Tiny trainers plus open three ends make sense. Yep, that's what I was trying to pitch, but nobody bit off on it. And actually, I got some really negative uh, comments about it. I, I, I blame myself for not maybe phrasing it properly. I, I don't know. Um, I, I typically find that when I say something and everybody has what I'm not expecting as a reaction, I, I take it on myself to think that maybe I didn't transmit the message properly. That's that's all. Uh, sell us five bucks on the Super Chat. Thank you so much, brother. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, one of my longtime supporters. One of the most positive people that I have uh, interacted with in FPV. Uh, the dude is just always positive even though he can't change his uh batteries and his smoke detectors at home it's kind of an ongoing joke but dude i, I love your energy I, I love the 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 positivity and the happiness you bring uh to all your videos and my discord and, and comments everything man appreciate it yep no letters in the whoop so i'm sitting at a, a w and an h both times i didn't follow directions my bad Manamana, hey 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 welcome buddy uh Angel FPV, uh, Decod RLX is solid. I have never seen that. Let's let's see what that looks like. I've never heard of that either. Let's uh, let's go back to the browser. And let's see, Dequad LRX. What is a GST and why is it that much? Ooh, that is interesting carbon fiber. For sure, jeez, she's pretty. Um, that is one heck of a tight weave, and it's got like a oh no, that's a rendering. Dang it, what's it look like? Like for reals, for reals. Hmm. Interesting frame. I mean, oh, that is interesting. There, they take the stacks screws here. And they go, and they support the top plate with the stack screws. What the heck? That's interesting. It would certainly keep this top plate from snapping. But that is that is very different. I've never seen that before. Um, that's the cool thing about this hobby. There is all sorts of different interpretations on everything. Uh, PK Stefan, great stuff from the race timer on. Super helpful. Here's a PBR. Stefan, thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, Danger Dave, Apex for the win. I love mine. Uh, um, I have a Martian with upgraded 3 mm top plate. It works well. So eventually, once you start getting, you're going to want multiples. You're going to want more than one quad. You're going to want a Explorer slash Basher. The one that you take out, she's ugly and she flies terrible, but she's the one that gets flown the most. Just don't let your friends find out. And that's the one you take out and you take into sketch areas. You're not too worried about losing it. You fly it without the GoPro on it. You beat it. You bash it. It goes back in your bag broken. You take it home. You love on it. You fix it. But you take it back with you next time, too, because that is all reliable. That's dependable. That's the one that you're going to smash up before you take the pretty ones out. The ones that haul the GoPros. The ones that fly real nice. They're buttery smooth. They have good motors on them got to have that beater. That's where the Martian comes in. Martian is good beater. You put the crap motors on it with different props, different motors with the old electronics and the old camera, and you go out and you explore, you practice, you beat it up, you get good, and then you fly, fly the good ones after that. Uh, which parts were really cheap? Yeah. Now when I say cheap, it's always relative. Um, 
Yeah, always relative. Hyperlight Glide. Uh, yeah, it's a good frame, but it's a little on the fragile side. And I think if you're asking me, like, what's a good freestyle frame, I'm not thinking of the, like, the ultralight. As far as I'm concerned, the lighter you can make it, the better it's going to fly. And the more it's, the more likely it's going to be to survive. The, um, the hyperlight's just maybe a little on the, a little on the thin side. But it is a very good frame. Uh, let's see, your Martian Anniversary frame. Yep, I think uh, they basically changed it to like a true X from like a stretched X. Yeah, and that's why I can't run 5.1 props. I'm not worried about uh, I'm not worried about breaking frames. If you're not breaking, you're not flying. Yep, that is 100% true. Uh, boots have the Korea 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 Talon V2. Not too crazy about it. Uh, you know, I've got one sitting in a box that I need to build up to to go beat up. Uh, boots, what what don't you like about it? I'm kind of curious. Let me know. Uh, Celis is the ultimate positive homie, and we're fortunate to have him around. Dude, you are not kidding, Yabs. Or Yarbs. Yarbs, sorry. Angel FPV, check out uh, at Quad USA on Instagram. They start selling them. Let's see. Let me see if I can find them on the Insta. All right, let's go to the gram. Interesting. So this is uh, this looks like a like the old um, like the old leopard. Um, was it LDR, LDARC or King Kong before they changed their name? The leopard. That is a that is an interesting design. I like that. That's cool looking. I wonder what that's made out of. Is that like, um, I wonder if it's titanium. That's something I like about Ar Armaton is uh, they do uh, a lot of titanium parts. And you can um, like color change the uh, the parts with just a little boric acid, some water, and a little bit of, uh, little bit of DC electrons going through it. Pretty cool. All right, back to the chat. Troy, uh, welcome. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Troy, you troll. Nice. Uh, let's see. Stainless? Oh, it might be stainless. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Hyphonic. Just got the new stack. Anyone know much? Never heard of it. Let's let's go take a look. See, Hyphonic. Let's look. RDQ's got them. And let's see. Which stack did you get? Did you get the the F7 or the AIO? Let me know. Kind of curious. Oh, the carbon's made by Armaton. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. F7 uh, V2. All right, so the F7 V2. Take a look at that. 30 by 30 already. I'm not a 30 by 30 fan. Um, they had their day. Everything should be 20 by 20 as far as I'm concerned. Smaller, less weight, less stuff hanging out to get beat up. But 30 by 30 still works. It works very well. Uh, let's take a look at some of the product photos here. So it's got a, it's, is that a bootloader button on the side or is that a LED button like the Mamba? Need better pictures. So it's hard to tell what kind of filtration they have on that because they're only showing, oh yeah, definitely going to need that big old honker cap because from what I can tell, there's not a lot of uh, filtration on the ESC. If really any, there's this little bank of caps right at the. Uh, let's see if maybe you guys could see that better. You can see where I'm pointing at least. Um, it's a little bank of caps right here. That ain't a lot. And on the back side, there's what one, two, three, four capacitors. So there's next to no uh, filtration on the ESC, but they do include this big old fat honking capacitor, which 
definitely use, and you want to keep that as close to the uh, the pads as possible. So you're going to want to solder them directly on there. And as far as the FC goes, let's see, we got some stats here. Uh, oh, it has Bluetooth on it. That's kind of cool. Uh, I've had a few flight controls with Bluetooth. I'd have to say I've never used it. Uh, DJI input cable. Uh, that's that's awesome. So it has the back in it to run the air unit at 6S. Well, the air unit doesn't run at 6S, but you can run 6S on the flight controller and provide the 4S to the, the air unit. That's that's nice. Most flight controllers are coming standard with that now, which is great. Uh, STM32, F7, uh, MC, yeah, blah, blah, blah. That's all boilerplate stuff. Um, that's pretty boilerplate. They all have this chip. That is just the processor, fancy wording, MPU 6000, so that's the, the gooder uh, uh, gyro. It's not the Bosch, but it's it's a pretty good one. Uh, let's see, lots of UARTs, which is F7, so you would expect that. 10 amps at two and a half, uh, 10 volts at 2.5 amps. That's perfect. 3 to 6. Oh, it has black box. That's nice. A lot of flight controllers, and so that's something you typically lose with the 20 by 20s is you'll typically lose the black box if you're going to lose anything. Okay, so there's a uh, LED pad. That's good. Voltage. Oh, no, that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking the button was a LED button like the Mamba, like the Mamba had. Pretty standard. So you've got uh, so this TX here. So you do have uh, ESC telemetry wire. Probably I'm going to guess probably UART six. They almost see, they almost always seem to. That is a pretty pretty piss poor wiring diagram, guys. Come on, what's, what's going on here? Oh, there it is. No, sorry, my bad. That's me. So it has LED pads on each corner. That's nice if you're if you like the LED life. Which I do. Okay, no, DJI is on UART 6, Bluetooth on 4. So already you, um, out of all those UARTs, you've already lost two. You've lost one to Bluetooth and you've lost one to ESC telemetry. So you are going to have left over uh, four UARTs. You have like, you'll have four UARTs left over unless they break these out on other places on the board, which, I mean, they probably do. It'd be nice. it, um, hopefully they do. So that is the general gist of how I look at flight controllers when I start looking at them. Tim Lowe, welcome, buddy. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I don't see any antenna for my Bluetooth, nor did I, my phone see it. Yeah, I don't see one on the board, but I'm not seeing a picture of the underside of the board either. So. Kind of weird, but I don't have a picture of the underside. So if the um, if the board had a Bluetooth, um, if it had a Bluetooth transmitter on it and receiver, it would look kind of like success stacks. Oh man, it's taking a long road to get to show you this. All right, I give up. So it's gonna have little, uh, it's gonna have like a little part where the board shaved down. There's like a little, little squiggly line of uh, copper trace. Back to the chat. Oh, where am I at? Uh, da, da, da. Okay, it has holes for the cap. That's good. Um, Bluetooth doesn't actually work. Thank. Uh, why is 33 obsolete to you now? Uh, because you can get all the performance in a 20 by 20 with less weight and less size. So a lot of the frames are getting skinnier and skinnier. So putting a 30 by 30 in there, you end up having 
parts of the board hanging out. But then remember, I'm coming from a racing mindset where you break everything all the time. So if I can keep the border of the board inside the frame more protected, the better. But um, 30 by 30, it's just, it's had its day. Uh, 20 by 20 is working great now uh, with plenty of UARTs, F7s, all the bells and whistles. Um, I just don't see a reason for the added weight and size. But, uh, and a lot of frames are coming, well, most frames now have the provisions for 20 by 20. But again, that's just my opinion. Um, uh, is the only point of a squished X frame for going through race gates? Uh, squished X frame is, it just has different characteristics on the, uh, on the roll axis versus the pitch axis. Um, most race frames are typically a stretched X. Uh, Four LED pads. Never seen a Beck that's that strong on a plug controller. But yeah, with the with the DJI stuff coming out, uh, Mahale, the the Becks are getting pretty beefy on these boards, um, which is a lot of heat. Which is a a downside to the twenty by twenty is they do get hot. But I don't think they. I have an experience where they get hot enough where they fail from the heat. And I am in a pretty hot climate where I'm at. Uh, yeah, Nick Nick Hayes on the corners. It's like the Mambas. Um, but the Mamba has, so you don't control the LEDs through the LED pad on the Mamba. The Mamba has a button on it, and it has its own dedicated controller, which is kind of neat. But if you want to do some of the cool stuff, like the like the integration of the LEDs with the Beta Flight, I don't know if you can actually do it with that flight controller. I haven't really tried. Uh, let's see. I hate the pads. Well, yeah, that's another downside. The pads are definitely smaller on the 20 by 20s. Uh, yeah, I saw the pimp kits. Uh, they look kind of cool if that's your thing. Um, I, I don't ever see my radio when I'm flying. So, I mean, then again, I do have a custom painted Tango 2. So maybe I don't really have any place to talk on that one. But... Um, more options, the more better. That's that's awesome. Uh, gonna need one of those tiny trainers. Yeah, that uh, they're a lot of fun, man. Um, but once you land on the grass, it's pretty much uh, pretty much game over. It's very difficult to turtle mode out. Let's see, there's a SDL S I two C Beta Flight two point three, but uh, only it says only second gyro. Draw one, two, or on SPI bus one. Hmm, that's weird. Several 90 degree angles is what Bluetooth on looks like. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a bunch of switchbacks on a road. Um, Tim Lowe got the Orcas. Awesome, man. You're you're gonna love them. Uh, I know you're you're blasted. I blasted your chat party. I'm sorry. No, no, no worries. No worries. Next. Um, yeah, I just wish it was a little more. Inf well, then again, I've only looked at one place. It'd be nice to see a little more information. Um, Ten minute video with close ups. They don't want me to post it. Uh, Nick, I'm going to make you a admin, so you can post a link to that, and uh, we'll poke through it. There's no music in the background, I hope. I don't want to get demonetized. Uh, Nick Braggs, how do I enter the giveaway? Oh, I haven't even talked about that yet, I, um, but here we go. So, I have a few things that uh, that I need to kind of move along and find a new home for and let's see I'm just going through the pile here how about this you guys let me know what you want I have a custom Cerakoted 
Tango 2 case in this uh, like red and black. Pretty neat looking. Or I have a DJI bundle which has the new Rotor Riot branded uh, foam and the um, an analog adapter for a for running a analog module on the side of your helmet or a, oh geez on the side of your goggles. Let me know what you guys want to do. Let me know, and obviously I'll throw a set of grips in there. Uh, okay, how do I add the video? Uh, depends on where it's at. Do you have it on YouTube or anything like that, or is it? Just on your computer. Yeah, uh, the wrench means you're a moderator. Oh, let's see. DJI bundle for sure. I know a guy who would love those. All right. We'll go with that. We'll go with the DJI stuff. All right. So the way I do the giveaways is uh, we do a super chat giveaway. Oh, I forgot to turn this on. All right. Let's see where we're at this week. Uh, so it's a super chat giveaway. So basically, uh, send me a, say, $3 super chat, and I'll put yourself on, I'll put your name on a random uh, random picker wheel, and we'll spin at the end of the night, and I'll send this to whoever the winner is. $3, um, and I'll do three entries per person. So uh, one for three, two for six, three for nine, you know what I mean? Pretty pretty straightforward. And uh, also I will randomize it. it that, way, um, that way you don't get like three of your name in, in a row. That's just, just the way I do it. All right, let's go back up there. All right, Nick. Yep. Yeah, go ahead and upload it, and then uh, post it. Uh, post it in the the the, the doobly do in the bottom there. Uh, would love that Tango Two shell, but alas, I'm without a Tango. Gotta get yourself a Tango, uh, Fritz. Tango Two is uh, probably my favorite radio. Uh, especially now that it takes the, the multi-protocol modules in the back. Um, I really like it. All right. Charles, hiya. How you doing, buddy? Um, yeah, maybe we could do that one of these days. Uh, we could probably we could do like a, a live sim. I've seen a couple YouTubers doing it, and I think my computer, maybe not my internet connection, but I think my computer could probably handle it. But Tim, uh, last I heard, you were struggling on the PC department. Let's see, the new analog ad adapter has a voltmeter on the side. Uh, this is the old one. This is the the OG one. Uh, I thought I wanted a YouTube channel to bump that, just to support tweets. This is kind of like a mentor. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Uh, Charles, goodbye. All right, man. I don't really know what uh, what was going on there. Huh. Whatever. Uh, so would be cool because I am still scared to fly. Uh, so Tim, can you can you run uh, Velocidrone on your setup at home? Let's see, what were we, what the heck was the point of the stream? 5,700, cool. Thank you everybody who uh, likes and subscribes. Uh, if you haven't liked, please uh, hit the like button. If you've already subscribed, don't hit that subscribe button again. That, that does bad stuff. But if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, cool, you got a card from him, an RX 580. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to, I'm waiting for the next Ryzen processors to come out to, uh, to move off of this uh, 2700X that I'm sitting on. Assault that notification bell. Fritz fights. If that's how you pronounce your name. I'm sure it's not. I'm terrible at it. Let's do wheel names. This is from the other week. Let's get rid of you guys. And you're on the wheel. One time. One time. It's darts. It's Darts. Thanks, buddy. And you're on here 
Not once. Whoop. What am I doing here? Learn to work this thing. Once, twice, thrice. There we go. Okay. So let's actually do what it was that we came here to do. And that is to set this sucker up. Uh, so I've flown it. It flies great uh, on beta flight. So it'll be interesting to see how much more greater -er it could possibly fly. But uh, first things first, we're going to get get these old meat cutters off of here. Because I'm, I'm venturing into a, a place I don't know. I, I've, I've never done this before. Um, I've helped one guy flash Falco X to a flight controller once, and um, he seemed to really like it. So I'm really hoping I like this. Uh, one of the one of the contributors to the creation of this thing, um, Mondo, he uh, he uses Falco X, and he swears by it. So we'll see how this works out. Dodge another hurricane this weekend. It's been a rash of those things lately. Getting kind of tired of dealing with hurricanes. Forget how to super chat in the pop-out menu. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Look for a dollar sign. So the downside to the tiny trainer, that's one of the things I don't like is you can't access your USB port while it's in the canopy. And the canopy is held down by four zip ties. So you got to clip those every time you want to get in here and, um, you know, hook Betaflight up to the doobly-doo and mess with things. So here we are. Here's the guts of it. Um, I built a dedicated SIM computer uh, out of one of those Intel NUX with the Radeon for Christmas. Cool, man. I really like the Nux. Though that's a really interesting, uh, a really interesting concept. Um, it's not for me, but I do like it. It does seem like a pretty interesting idea. Uh, let's see. Tweet. Do you have a tune uh, you're using on Betaflight for your Tiny Trainer? I'd like a copy of it. Uh, yes, I do have a tune. Um, actually, it's exactly what's on the Tiny Trainer website. Um, copy paste. I just put my rates in it. There's really no, really no changes to it. And with the hardware I'm using set up, uh, mechanically sound, it flies really good. These props do, uh, they do make the quad fly really bad really quick when you start bending them. That's the downside to these props. Okay, so we got her hooked up to the computer. Uh, Timothy Lowe, five bucks. That'll get you on the wheel one time. I really need to figure out how to do this. All right. So, yeah, the Hades Candy Nuts are pretty, man, those things are, that's a beast of a, a little AIO computer, I guess it's, like, no, I guess I wouldn't call it that. I don't really know what you call it. Well, a Nuck, obviously a Nuck, but, uh, the computer I built this year, it's big, and I was thinking building a small one for this whole setup that I'm doing here. But um, I bought a cheap, well, not cheap, but it's like a $500 Acer laptop with a with a, <clears throat> a newer AMD CPU and a, uh, let's see, the RTX 1060 in it, and uh, it... I'm really kind of impressed for it. It's only like 500 bucks. It, I mean, it feels like absolute garbage. It's plastic and flexible and all that stuff, but it ain't bad. All right, so we've got this hooked up to the computer. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to Betaflight. Betaflight, why are you not Betaflighting? Come on. Come on, Betaflight. All right, well, that's not going to work. Let's, let's just do this. So we're going to come over to Betaflight here. And why are you looking for a GPS? All right. So what we're going to do, come over to Betaflight. 
and we're going to do diff all. And I'm going to copy to the clipboard, and I'm going to dump everything into a text file. just for safekeepings for later if I decide to go back. All right. What the heck, I lost my mouse. Computer's acting weird. All right, there we go. So, Next thing we need to do is, so before you, before you do um, Falco X, uh, you need to go to download the configurator, Falco X configurator. And we're going to go ahead and get this guy. So we're looking for uh, the Mamba F411 version. Uh, so this is the firmware. We're going to download that. And then we need to download the Windows configurator. We'll download that guy as well. And we play the waiting game. Okay, so it starts. The difference between diff all and dump all is uh, diff all is anything you have changed from the stock configuration from when that board was flashed. So when you flash a board, it has this. This is the base configuration for this board. Anything you change is a difference. So diff all is every change you've made in a text document. So then once you dump it in there, but you've got to but you'll have to stay on the same version. You can dump that in there and it'll just make the few tweaks. Um, dump all is every parameter, things that you don't use, things that aren't part of that board, every beta flight parameter is dumped. So that's the difference. So it's a difference between like maybe a hundred lines of code versus a thousand lines of code. That's all. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, one of the reasons I stay with NVIDIA was for the NVEC encoder. Think of a tiny trainer, but uh, I can turtle out of the grass. I can't turtle out of the grass? Nope. Uh, most likely not. It Depending on how tall the grass is, but most of the time if I crash in the grass, I just got to hoof it over to it and pick it up. Um, Who's the madman with a desktop icon for the Windows Control Panel on Windows 10? Eh, you know, old, old habits die hard. <laughs> uh, all right, Boots, we'll see you later, man. Uh, if you want uh, that that configuration, just uh, hit me up in the Discord, and I'll get it over to you. Um, Yeah, man, uh, in that case, don't worry about it. We'll, I'm sure we'll be at this for a while. Uh, so this is not the Mamba stack. This is the Mamba AIO. Uh, and th there's only two flight controllers that I know of that don't come from uh, Flight 1 that can put Falco X on it, and it is the Mamba F411 AIO and the... Um, Maytech one as well. Chris W, welcome, buddy. Welcome to the chat. So we're doing the uh, we're doing a super chat giveaway for the DJI goggle foam and the um, the uh, analog module adapter. All right, so now we have. Those two things downloaded. Let's go ahead and uh, install the configurator. However long this takes, we can close out a beta flight there. We'll disconnect that flight controller. Let's run the configurator. 
configurator. So when you purchase the license for this flight controller, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it right here. Let me, uh, let me change this to add. Bear with me here, guys. All right, there we go. So what you need to do is when you purchase the license from Flight One, uh, you need to give them your serial number because so then they put it in their database. And this is how you get it. You you download the Falco X configurator, you hook your quad up, and there is your serial number. You send that to them in an email, and they add it to the uh, to the database. All right. So we're going to manually flash with a file. Downloads. And I don't know where that went. Okay. So we're, I'm learning while we're while we're doing this. So we're going to upload update to latest version. And here we go. never done this before and I've never done it on this computer so what issues I run into or I don't know they're gonna be whatever issues other people might run into so there it is Matex F411 version right there and so this is uh, this is what you would be seeing in the VTX but the setup wizard is, um, that's kind of how it works right now. So let me get a battery and a radio. And one more thing, we are back. All right, sorry guys, if you're chatting away, I, I'm not looking at it right now. There it is, so I found a crossfire on UR1. I hope you guys can see this. You guys seeing this? All right, yeah. So now it's asking me to move my arm switch, so. There it is. Who sticks in circles for two seconds? Center all sticks. Uh, move throttle to the bottom. Move yaw stick left. Move pitch back down, roll left, place your arm switch in the arm position, move roll right, uh, let's see, when your props are on, which side of your front left prop is highest? Uh, Y'all left for left for Y'all left for left, so which is reverse props. Y'all right for right. So so I do reverse props. So we're going to y'all left. Make sure the props are off. Roll right and y'all left to confirm props are off. The battery's plugged in. So roll right, y'all left. I gotta, man, I got to think about this. Are the motor spinning left for no, right for yes? So no, so left. No.
30 seconds. Hmm, something's up. Oh, well, it's not working. Wonder if it's because I got this thing hooked up. Let's try this again. Hmm. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Huh. Well, let's uh, let's try starting over with that. Something weird happened. That did not work. Hmm. Not really sure what's up. Let's see, going back to the chat. Tango 2, but don't know if it's a V3 or V2. How can I know? Um, pop the back off, and uh, you'll have a connector for the multi-module. That'll indicate that it's a V2 or V3. And then if it's a V3, then um, I think you can do 500 milliwatts output. I think that's the difference. Uh, and I think it's also stamped on the board uh, V3 as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Yarbs, I'm thinking that might have been what it is. So uh, I'm going to remove that and start the process over again. Let's see what happens. Let's do... FA.coX. All right. Let's try this again. Telemetry recovered. All right. So it's starting the process over again. We haven't killed anything. a little more space here Let's see if you guys can actually see what I'm looking at here oh yeah that should work all right uh, no VTX found move your arm switch so remove the arm switch 20 seconds move sticks in circles for two seconds center Ten. all sticks Move throttle Five, bottom. Four, Move three, yaw stick left. Two, one. Timer one elapsed. Move only yaw stick. Move yaw stick left. Uh, pitch down. Roll left. Move roll right. Uh, Y'all left. Roll right, y'all left. Jesus.
Damn, that scared the shit out of me. That, uh... <laughs> I want to say this isn't working right. What the heck? Let's start this over again. Man. Whew. What the heck is going on? Arm switch. Well, I don't like what's going on here. This is not uh, not very confident, confidence inspiring. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. No, my like I would have killed this thing. Oh, let's see. Firmware download. Mamba F four eleven. Let's see what happens if we upload firmware. Let's try this again. Telemetry recovered. Draw the bottom, yaw left, pitch down, roll left, arm in arm position, and roll right. Uh, left, props are off, uh, roll right, yaw left. There we go. Just have to not be an idiot, apparently. There we go. So it works. It works. What a pain in the butt. Okay. So that was the. That's where I screwed up. Is I didn't flash the firmware that I got from the Flight One uh, website. I just let it automatically update. So that apparently is an issue. All right. So we're spinning at five percent. So we're gonna roll right for yes. Uh, let's see, motor one spinning, push both sticks towards the corner of the motor spinning. So we're going to go this way, uh, towards the motor spinning, 
towards the motor spinning and towards the motor spinning. Okay, are you using BL Heli 32? Uh, no. Roll left for no. Detecting telemetry wizard, searching for telemetry. Uh, let's see. Flight controller direction lay quad flat and push roll stick left. So roll stick. And that's about as flat as it's going to get. Roll stick left. Put the quad on its nose and push the roll stick right. Would you like to set up auto level? Uh, sure, why not? Roll right for yes. Mode switch. Mode, uh, Y'all left, exit, Mo move switch. Move switch to on. All right, all the way forward and roll right. Wizards complete, please cycle power. So it has tramp telemetry, which is correct, and crossfire, which is correct as well. So that's power cycle. Telemetry lost. We shouldn't need the configurator anymore after this. So live OSD. I don't want to do the configuration again. What the heck? Oh, look at that. You can do the whole configuration through the uh, through the OSD now. Hmm. Interesting. Didn't seem like it saved all my settings for some reason. Well, let's go back through it again. Do this again. Do I want to set up now. Where's your fleet? Please power cycle. Why does it keep going through the, it keeps going through the, uh, through the setup process for some reason. It's kind of weird. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Hmm. 
It keeps going through the setup wizard. It's really weird. I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, oh well. Bugs. Just gonna have to work it, work it out. Okay, been out of the chat for a little bit here. Let's take a look. See what's going on here. Oh wow. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris W, what transmitter is that? Tango 2. Yep. Um, can I get... Uh, you? Yeah, there were some refurbished Tango 2s you could have gotten a hold of, uh, but... Yeah. Yeah, uh, Nick Hayes, send them to uh, tweetfpv at gmail.com. Uh, the Tiny Trainer is awesome if you want to fly a 3-inch. Uh, it's, it's the funnest 3-inch I have to fly. Uh, I don't think it's the best 3-inch in the world, but it is. It, it was designed to fly like a heavier quad than it is. See. Nick Hayes had issues with the Tango since upgrade, Freedom TX, and new firmware. I like DJI rated better, but channel 5 up, all move the throttle. That's really weird. That's uh, some weird mapping issue in the radio. Uh, let's see. Fat Shark Scouts. Darn good box goggle. Uh, yeah, I had to run my DJI goggles for um, a couple months because I didn't have my my Orcas at the time. They were out being painted. And uh, living with DJI goggles with an analog module, not bad. I definitely recommend it if you can only buy one set of goggles, go with the DJI. Oh, Celis, you bought a 360 Go. Awesome, buddy. They're a lot of fun. They get hot, though. They're not the most durable thing, either. Man, the chat jumps, and I just lose my place. Let's see, uh, Fitz wants Tango 2, waits for extra cash, and run the Light Radio 2. Light Radio 2 is a good radio if you got a good one. Uh, the quality control has been kind of me on that. Um, I've got one here that was great, another one that not so much, but um, Beta FPV, they were great. They took care of all the issues I had. Ten to twelve DJ DJ units. Jeez, man, that's a lot. Love my Tango too, but it's uh, not the updated board. Uh, Flash is fine. Yeah, as long as you're on the the V two. I was an early adopter. I got the like the the first ones available. I didn't have the, I had the V1 board, so I couldn't use the multi-protocol module, so I had to upgrade. Oh, by the way, if anybody here wants a V1 board, let me know. I got an extra, if you need it. Uh, Elkanesh, oh, uh, so the giveaway is for the, uh, the DJI analog adapter and the brand new Rotorite face foam for it. 
Uh, Three dollar super chat. I'll get you in the drawing for it. Uh, the GTB three three nine. Those were great little quads. Um, See. Yeah, Beta FPV, they've been cranking out some pretty neat stuff lately. Um, I really like their Advanced 2, uh, a, like, all-in-one kit with the goggles, the, the remote, the the quad. The quad it was in it was pretty good. Uh, the goggles are decent. The controller was the, the light radio, too, which is a great radio, or a, a good radio for the price. I've seen a lot of mods on it. I've seen people putting OLED screens with buttons on them and having a full interactive OpenTX uh, setup in it. Uh, pretty impressive what people are getting out of it. Nick Hayes, $3 Super Chat. That'll get you on the wheel, buddy. All right, wheel of names here. And there you go, Nick Hayes. Uh, probably never use the module. Um, I use the module because of the all the micro stuff that I I, I fly. But here's my setup, um, and this works out pretty good. Is I have the, the iRange uh, X4 light with the FR Sky little T antenna, so that I can still fold this guy if I wanted to. It's not perfect, but it works. It definitely does uh, ruin like the nice lines of the Tango too, but you know whatever. All right, so I'm gonna try to figure out what the heck is going on with this thing. Why is it not saving? Let's poke through the interwebs. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, this is probably gonna take a little more um a little more troubleshooting on the side to figure out what the heck is going on with it. I don't know why it keeps it's like it keeps wanting to go into the configurator. Maybe we gotta flash it one more time. I don't know. When it out, flash it out. So this was the Mamba F411. That's the one I downloaded. Okay, got the configurator. Okay, let's um, let's try it again. Let's see what happens. All right, let's go to update firmware. Let's close that. Uh, let's do this. Man, you really got to be hard up into this hobby to do this. I mean, I can't imagine a noob getting into this hobby trying to deal with this crap. Welcome to Tango 2. Throttle warning. Warning. Timer one elapsed. Alright, crossfire tramp. Move your arm switch. Boom. Move all sticks. Okay. Center sticks.
Did it work? Hmm. Just thinks it didn't work. No? What the hell? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I guess we'll have to do a little more uh, little more troubleshooting on this one. Go read up on it, figure out what the heck's going on. It's not something I expected at all. Let's see. Let's see, uh, Mahal, I mortal Tiana R9. <laughs> yeah. Um, Reese, welcome. Explore, what have I missed? A uh, little bit of news. This thing's scaring the shit out of me. Um, this thing not working cor correctly. I'm trying to go to Falco X on it. Um, super chat giveaway for some DJI goggle foam from Rotor Riot and a analog module for three dollar super chat. And well, I think that's about it. Let's see, R9 has been great lately. Receivers are eight bucks. Damn, are they that cheap? That is crazy. Let's see. Make sure the Chinese knockoff nice thirty twos. Yeah. <laughs> I quit three times now. Yeah. Uh man. Wrong firmware, maybe. Uh, market Market Zero says wrong firmware. Firmware, maybe. Uh, I think you need the yeah, Toyota version has their own board and firmware. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is the first time I've messed with Race Flight at all. Um, yeah, the weird thing is like it's supposed to be. I think it's just supposed to be this firmware, which is the Mamba F411, because that's that's the board I got in here. Configurator. The bug tracking. No, that's not what I want. I don't think that's a Bale Heli 32 board. Oh, Bill Hill, yes, that's that's the guy. Taco X. Hmm.
Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of lost on this one. Oh, let's see. Back to the chat. Uh, it's race flight. Is that part of the tiny trainer spec? No, uh, it's not part of the tiny trainer spec, but um, it's supposed to be a, a really good firmware for racing. So I just want to give it a shot. Uh, the issue is with this uh, is it goes through the configurator setup, tells you to power cycle, and then it goes right back into the setup. Like it's not. Um, it's not saving for some reason. Yeah, but it's it's all their own proprietary, like everything. It, it, yeah, it's all their own stuff. Hmm. I wonder what Betaflight says if I, if I connect it. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Can't even connect. Uh, Mamba F four eleven load. Flash. Hmm. Interesting. So I can't even get into beta flight anymore with this thing. It has it that locked up. Well, let's try this again, see what happens. It didn't go well the first time, but who knows? Maybe I did something wrong. Welcome to Tango 2. Throttle warning. Timer 1 elapsed. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Yeah, it def definitely doesn't like the uh, update to latest version, whatever that means.
Yeah, this goes right back into the. Yeah, this goes right back into the setup. Oh well. Still yeah, 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 shut up. Well, I guess we're gonna have to save that for another day because that is just not working out for me. Ah, eh, you win something, you lose some. Version RC driver fixer. No, not in this case. Uh, yeah, maybe the maybe the driver fixer for getting back into beta flight that might that might work, but um. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why the uh, flight one configurator keeps cycling over and over. Like it doesn't save its settings. It's really weird. Um, uh, Fritz, the Falco X configurator is flight one's configurator, so it's like beta flight or emu flight or clean flight or butter flight. I have it's their their configurator for their hardware and software. Uh, but yeah, let's let's give it a try to go back to beta flight and see what happens. Let's open up beta flight here. And let's see, I think I have the driver fixer somewhere. Actually, I don't think I have it. Yeah, you know what? Last time I ran the driver fixer, it it uh, it gave me some weird stuff. I don't know what's going on with it. Yeah, last time I downloaded the driver fixer, I had to basically format this entire computer. So I am not going to mess with that today. Uh, I can probably try it on my other computer. That one might actually work. So yeah, let me let me jump over to that computer and see see what happens with that one. Uh, back to the chat. Da -da. Yeah, Nick, that's what I was trying to do is go back to beta flight and go back, but um, I don't think it's going to help. But the driver fixer, I think, has a bug in it. I wouldn't really trust it. <laughs> run uh, Zadig. All right. Um, I'm going to put you on standby. I'm going to run over to the other computer real quick and see if I can get this thing to run beta flight at least. Be right back.
All right, well, I thought I had it on my other computer. I don't, and I'm also getting the same virus warning error on that computer, so I'll have to try to find another copy somewhere else. All right, let's... Scott FPV getting a tiny train down the road with Crossfire. Love the content. Thanks for the super chat. Throw you in the, the drawing for tonight. And here we go. Oh, Scott's on the wheel. Uh, yeah, I, I've i used the driver's fixture a lot and I it works. Uh, for some reason, um, Whatever copies on Impulse RC's website has something, some virus or something with it. Uh, it definitely screwed up this computer uh, the last time I used it. Yeah, I need to jump the bootloader pads. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at with it. That's the problem is I can't get, I can't even get it to open into the uh, configurator. Uh, Mike, the drawing tonight is for a um, a uh, DJI goggle phone, the the ones that just came out from Rotor Riot. This guy here, and where go? Uh, a analog module adapter for the same goggle. Three dollars. Uh, no, it's not bricked. I just need to, uh, I need to get to the actual physical bootloader pins on the board. Um, not a big deal. Let's see if I can find bootloader pins in this thing. I don't even know if there are. I'm sure there are. Just gotta find them. Super detailed drawing on it. Diagram link. There we go. Not any help whatsoever. <laughs> Jeez. Um, hmm. Yep, not a lot of help there. I mean, I like Diatone products, but I gotta say their their documentation is pretty crap. Hmm. Oh well. You know, no, uh, very few flight controllers anymore have actual buttons on them for the bootloader. There are a lot of them are just two pads. You gotta you gotta short. And I don't know where these ones are. I don't see them from where I'm at. They may not even be labeled. Oh, well.
Explorer. Yep, that's what it fixes. Um, I just can't get a copy of the driver fixer for some reason. I'll find it somewhere else. Oh, look at this. Is driver fixer a virus? Hmm. Well, see? I don't know why it's doing that. Something dicked up my computer last time. I it was literally the last time I used this program. My this computer went to shit, and this computer is about I don't know a couple months old, and it's really all I use it for. And it's been it's weird that that Windows is catching it now. So I don't know if it's really something wrong with it or if I'm just being paranoid. Yeah, and I I've flashed this this uh, flight controller on the other computer, and it won't recognize it either. So because I have Falco X on there, it's probably why Betaflight won't pick it up because it's not it's not of the same branch that like Betaflight, Cleanflight, and iNav are, where they all recognize each other. This is something completely different. And because of that, I probably got to bridge the pads to get it into uh, bootloader mode. Tim, you have the file? Oh, man. Uh, you send it to me? Well, it's a fork, kind of, but it's th it's all their own proprietary stuff, and the, the two do not, they don't talk or correlate at all whatsoever with each other. So it it's its own thing. Well, I mean, I guess I could dig into this and find the bootloader pads. Or, you know what, I could probably save it for another day. Um, tell you what, let's go ahead and do the Super Chat spin. Uh, again, goggle foam, brand new stuff, just hit the market. The analog adapter with a 3D printed um, kind of holder for it. And um, uh, Tim, uh, go ahead and send it over on uh send it to my email tweetfpv at gmail.com and we'll see if we can get that to work i'd be curious if the if the driver fixer fixes this uh and a set of grips three dollar super chat well let's roll that at uh in about four minutes here oh you sent the picks all right let's uh take a peek here All right, so here's the pictures of that uh, Hyphon RC board. Oh, there is no Bluetooth on that. I can tell you that right now. Huh. Their product listing must be kind of off, apparently. Yeah, definitely no Bluetooth on that guy. So where do we find that one? This is a Hyphonic, Hyphonic RC. Let's see, maybe just that listing was bad. No, let's check Power Drone, see what their listing says. No, we were looking for the F722s.
Wireless Bluetooth parameter modulation. You are blue. No. No, it definitely, I mean, unless you're doing something different, but every flight controller that has Bluetooth on it, you can see the Bluetooth antenna on the board itself. So, I don't know. I don't know. Something doesn't seem right there. Kind of fishy. Gmail blocks is a virus. Interesting. Huh. Uh, Fitz asks, is Hyphon a reputable brand? I've never heard of him before. Um, there's been a couple players that just got on the market that um, don't have a whole lot of um, don't have a lot of uh, street cred yet, just because they're they're so new. They claim it's hidden, huh? I don't know. I mean, uh, let's see. Um, Air flight. iFlight made some boards that had Bluetooth on them. And it would be the Sussex standard flight controllers. Maybe this was it. Man, iFlight's website sucks. They must have phased out a lot of stuff. I don't see it anymore. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have found a way to hide that that Bluetooth antenna because this one's supposed to have Bluetooth as well. So all the ones I've seen in the past had like a little squiggly line Bluetooth antenna type thing in them. And this one says it has Bluetooth and doesn't show it either. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong. Won't be the first time. Huh, oh well. Hopefully that one works out for you. Had it hanging off the side. Let's uh, yeah. There's not a lot of stuff on that board. Hmm. All right. Well, it's time. Let's go ahead and 
spin this wheel. Let's see who is going to get wherever the hell this wheel went. There it is. Let's randomize this thing a little bit. Yeah, a lot of the newer uh, boards that are DJI ready are USB-C. Um, it's kind of it's kind of where everything's going to go, I'm sure. It is giveaway time. Fitz, you are 100% correct. USB can just yeah, go away. Oh, Lego, welcome to the live stream. Uh, so it's, uh, we're, I was working on putting uh, Falco X on this quad, do a lot of Q&A, answer questions, just kind of shooting the shit with everybody. And I typically do a, a super chat giveaway for some products that I have laying around. This time it's for a uh, uh, a new uh, a new DJI goggle foam that just came out by Rotor Riot, uh, a analog adapter module for the side of it and a set of my grips. Uh, $3 super chat, get you on the wheel for it. All right, so let's go ahead and spin this thing. Thank you, everybody who came out tonight to watch the uh, the craziness with the stupid Flight One stuff. Apparently, we have a lot more work to do to figure this one out. Let's shuffle this thing up, and here we go. Good luck to everybody, and winner is going to be... It starts. Congratulations. Hit me up, uh, tweetfpb at gmail.com, and um, we'll talk about some details, and I'll get this stuff out to Lickety Split. Probably like, you know, sometime next week. Uh, Nick Hayes, uh, it, it, only, it only means you win if you believe it and believe that it's going to come from somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for everybody who came out. Um, I think I'm going to kind of call it here. It's been a long night. Uh, man, I didn't even get to half the stuff I want to show you guys. You know what? Like, let's burn through this. Let's put this train wreck to the side here. So a couple cool things came in this week. Um, one of the biggest... Uh, one of the biggest failures I had was during the iGod competition was on this little guy. This was my brand new Acro B BL V2 Elemental P newbie drone quad. First time trying to do the uh, inverted power loop thing, hit a paver stone, literally ripped the canopy and the mounts for the flight controller off of the frame, cracked the front of the frame, bent the props. Just a disaster. I'm kind of bummed, bummed about that one. And the other thing that just came in, uh, got some replacement canopies for my Ultimate 1S uh, HD Micro Whoop build, which, where'd it go? Oh, it fell down, which is right here. I got a video coming on this guy. Um, this was a, a fun little project. This thing works really well, but it uses the canopy off of the um, Mobile 6 HD. And so I've talked about this one. This was the, the Flywoo Explorer. This is something I've talked about for a little bit. And I'll be honest, I it flies really well, but I've been having a lot of issues with things like the OSD and the GPS. Um, finally figured it out. There's an, an error with Betaflight 4.2, so I had to roll back to Betaflight 4.1 fixes the OSD, the GPS thing, it, I mean, I still couldn't get GPS to work. So I just hooked up to a battery bank and left it outside for like a half an hour and it works now. So apparently the, uh, the whole battery on this thing was deader than a doornail, but she's working good now, but it has some competition because this thing just came. This is the 
iFlight. Um, oh, what the hell is it called? The uh, Cicada 4? Maybe that's what it was. Chimera. Chimera 4. So this is the uh, competitor to it. Pretty much the same price for pretty much the same ish kind of quad. This is honestly the first time I've taken this thing out of the box, so you guys get to see it now. Um, so this is kind of the competitor for it. So it's still a long range quad, but it's built very differently. Uh, instead of going with the dead cat style to keep the keep the props out of the view, they went with a, uh, a Truex style, which is a very interesting choice, but they do sell a dead cat frame for it. That was like an extra 15 bucks, so not bad. It's definitely way, way more sturdier than the uh, than the Flywoo version, but it is using a single piece base plate. Uh, a couple things I already like better about this is they put the crossfire antenna in the front instead of in the back. You want your signal the weakest when you're when you're going away, uh, going away from you. Uh, let's see. I'm not. Uh, Fritz says I'm not impressed so far. To be honest, looks heavy. Uh, I fight send me free stuff. I changed my mind. Um, so uh, my wife gonna divorce me too. Uh, you know what? We're both very lazy, so it's just gonna uh, complacency is a bitch. You know. You're right. It does look heavy. Let's see. Sitting at 170 grams versus, you know what, that, I don't think that worked. So 163 against 170. So it is a little bit heavier. It is certainly a little bit heavier. So, I don't know. I mean, this thing has been kind of a pain in the ass since I got it. Uh, just the, the, especially with the, like, so they use a 16 by 16 flight controller on this, and they have the the DJI uh, MSP for the, the OSD on soft serial, which is causing a lot of issues with it. So you can't really upgrade in this. They're using a normal 20 by 20 flight controller. So hopefully this works out a little bit better. It doesn't come with a, with a lost model alarm like this one does, but it does have an actual beeper on it. Um, like I said, I prefer the, the antenna mount to be in the front. It is quite a bit bigger. And let's see what motors came on this. This are the 1404 3800KV. Ooh, those are kind of high. Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Definitely, uh, definitely two completely different quads. This one is frame is a lot thinner. Definitely not going to take the abuse this will take, but it's not really supposed to have to take abuse. You're not supposed to crash a damn thing. Uh, let's see. Have you seen a Alex from Shock or uh, take the lightweight mini long range order one? It's pretty gorgeous. I have not seen that yet. Let's go check it out. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to see it on here. Shocker. Jeez, these guys are creative with their names. There we go. Well, it certainly looks light. Do that to render. Well, that'll be interesting to see. Um, it kind of reminds me of a little bit like a Acrobrat with that, with the 
the front brace. But man, I think it's just slammed. It's gonna be an interesting build. And yep, that's why I thought they were calling it the Shocker. <laughs> man, these guys. Send the file on Discord. Man, I don't have Discord on this computer. Um, oh, and they're using their lithium ion packs. It'll be interesting. Uh, I want to try running a lithium ion on these two. All right, let me uh, let me head over to the other computer and get that file downloaded. See if we can make this thing work. Uh, let's see. Gotta go to Discord. All right. All right. Let's see if this will actually work this time. And my computer is not happy about something right now. Yep, this is the exact same thing happened. Man, this is the same thing that happened last time I ran it. So. Now everything I'm trying to run on my computer is telling me I don't have permissions to do it. What the fuck? Sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, Windows tripping out right right now. What's going on here? Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Like, uh, it Windows security is losing its freaking mind right now on my computer.
And let me try it one more time. All right, here we go. All right, I'll show you guys what's happening. As soon as I get to it, I'm getting this stupid thing here. And It's as soon as that file comes over, it, it it's wanting to quarantine it. And my other computer is doing the same thing. So both of them are doing it. I mean, I've never had to do that before, which is strange. Yeah, so I know what you're talking about, um, Explore, with the run anyways, and this isn't that. This is doing something completely different that I've never seen. And I don't know why both my computers are doing it, because that one never used to. Fuck it. See what happens. Oh, where's that? Really? All right, let's 
expect the number of rounds I should be calculating. So well, that's going on now. <laughs> Eh, oh well. Yeah, I stopped whispering, whispering it uh, quietly. I'm just saying it loudly out loud. Well, it might also be because I have like 30 different things connected to my USB ports right now. That might be an issue. I don't know. All right. Anyways, that's enough of this for tonight. Um, uh, I'll give it a try later, uh, maybe tomorrow. That would be interesting. That's a neat looking frame. Uh, Mike. All right. Well, anyways, I'm going to end it on this note. Um, I'll mess with this a little bit more tomorrow. See what I can get going. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. Like and subscribe. All that happy horse shit. Buy affiliate links. Link tree. Tweet. FPB. Something. Whatever. Anyways, I'm done with this. I will see you all next time. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, this was fun. Hopefully, uh, hope I can get this Falco X crap working. All right, I will go fly, have fun, bye.